I think it's um, Javante Williams and Kenneth Gainwell. I think okay. it's funny when you look at all three of those guys, ETN, Gainwell, Williams. All three are vastly different players. Yeah. Win in vastly different ways. But the one thing is they all win with a trait that is near elite or elite. That's important. Elite, elite yes. Right? And that's important. Right. Well, so, go well, ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll let you finish. I'll let you no, finish. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Do that. I just, I was going to say, what, what do you, what is the elite trait for uh, Javante Williams? But fin- finish your. Oh, I'll, I'll, that, that's exactly what I was going to bring okay. up next. With okay. Williams, it's, it is the, th- like, through contact. He is an absolute hammer. He is an energy giver. He is a guy that you want to develop your offensive identity around because of how hard the kid plays. And he has good feet. Um, he does a lot of little things well, but man, he's a tough out as a tackle. I mean, yeah. that is what he power run scheme, Seattle, you know, if that type where, you know, that's what it is. You know, you are getting the ball downhill and you're going to be the short yardage guy. You know, you're going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns. Um, Buffalo is another place I think he'd fit really well into. Um, yeah. Take some, take some, you know, some help on to get some help on Josh Allen at the goal line. If um, you're not super uh, plugged into everybody going on and maybe you don't know anything about Javante Williams, 5'10", 220, 225 ish uh, from UNC was in a fantastic ecosystem. Um, the 2020, the 2016 or the 2019 uh, numbers are, are pretty good, but the 2020 numbers are, are really good. Um, and he's, he's a really fun guy to watch. No, yeah, he's awesome. Pl- First plays in the angry. ACC in yeah. rushing, um, third in the NCAA in rushing, third in, um, yeah. So I do what, have what the I do have on? the PFF uh, stats for his uh, yards after contact. He led the or no, he was second in the nation last year with four point six yards after contact, and he averaged point four eight broken tackles per attempt. So he was he was breaking half a tackle every attempt, which was which what PFF said that was a record that they'd had. Now, yeah. my I question think he averaged, I think he averaged a touchdown every 8.2 touches too, or something. Crazy. Yeah. Whoa. They're there. I mean, him and Michael Carter were unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, what that was, was going on there. What, what was that combination of scheme run blocking and two very good running backs? Was there like a whole like circle of things that was going on there? Was it like a symbiotic relationship of? Hey, I don't know, man, but it was crazy like to watch. The conglomerate <laughs> of the team and the environment That's that they crazy. were all in. It was, uh, what, do what, you, would you, what would you, what would be another name for that? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it was a good environment. That's what it was. Ah, it was you're, you're holding out on us. <laughs> Ecosystem. Ecosystem um, was where we were looking for. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. He, I, he oh, yeah. He was holding out. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. You brought, you brought up, uh, or I'm interested. You brought up Buffalo, right? Because, you know, my, yeah. my question with Javante was like, you know, you look at that run versus, um, man, to Miami, oh, Miami, right? That run yeah. was so ridiculous. And Dude, thinking, that was like, nuts. Is he gonna be able to do this against, you know, the the, the NFL players? Because there certainly wasn't anybody in the ACC. They could tackle him, but like, does that, can you knock him because he was playing in the ACC? And then I think about Devin Singletary and how he wasn't playing against anybody any good, but he was breaking mad tackles with a less athletic skill set than uh, Javante has, but still breaking a bunch of tackles against inferior talent. Do you knock him at all for that? Or you just, no, no, man. I think it's like Dave Montgomery. Look at that. I mean, look at him at Iowa state and the, you know, big 12. I mean, Like everybody said the same thing. He's not going to break that many tackles in the NFL level, but you know, you have to look at it in the terms of two years, right? You look at it from their first year in the NFL and their second, the jump that Dave Montgomery made in terms of his play style, excuse me, getting more North and South and actually using his skill set, like that he had in college with breaking tackles and yards after contact and, as the Bears offensive line improved, he improved, obviously. But I think he can't. There's nothing indicating that he can't. Um, he has that motor that you like in that energy giving. Um, my running back's going to make you feel it for all four quarters. That's that's who he is. And I think NFL teams are going to like that. He, The Atlanta Falcons with Arthur Smith would be my first choice oh, for him. That would be great. 
fantastic. You just run it down their throat for four quarters. And we have Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley on the outside and, and Matt Ryan dishing the rock. I mean, that's the type maybe. of, uh, hopefully, I mean, actually doesn't, doesn't like maybe, maybe not. I mean, yeah. maybe it's Wilson, you don't know, but yeah, he's going to be a guy who's in a immediately coming into command 15 to 20 touches a game. Now, see, so there's like another question I have about this guy is like, he never, I think he had in 19, he had 166 attempts and that's the most he, he was right. sharing a lot of that workload with Carter. And it's like, can, who all the way, you, by the way, you might met, like Carter with the other running back in that ecosystem was annihilating it as well. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, like this is like a pump free uh, penny. penny situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good. I like the historical. historical good ecosystem comparison. comparisons. But I, do you I, have I any, it's nice. Do you have any qualms about him not having shouldered a full three down load, even in college and, and, and then going into the pros? You think he can handle 20 carries a game? Uh, when he's never uh, seen that type of work before. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Jay. But I think for me, it's more um, look at it like Antonio Gibson. Right. He had under 30 carries in college. Well, no, if there's an outlier, that's an I, outlier. But what I'm, yeah, but like it, it, I don't think that, we love Antonio Gibson, or at least uh, we do. Uh, yeah. So I don't think that really, I don't think I'm, at least me personally, I'm not concerned about him shouldering, shouldering that workload. Um, I think if the frame was maybe a little different on this guy, it he certainly has the frame. I, I think, yeah, I mean, he's not like a 198 pound back who's going to be getting 20 touches. Um, you know, he's a 222 pound guy. So yeah, with, with impressive skills. I mean, he's got like, hey, he's, he's got player. some bend, like he's got that. What, what is it? Is it, I think Matt Wallman called it some curvy linear movement. Where he's linear. Like, oh yeah. That's right? the, you, that's the Vonta Smith calling card right there. Unbelievable curve linear mover. Would you say that Javante save it? Also, he's at the end. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> just we'll, we'll go back and just erase that whole. <laughs> no, no, it's all no, no, it's um, all I'm, I'm playing, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's his ability to not lose speed when he's just not we call cutting, you know, not the hard plants, but just changing course at 222 pounds. That's hard to do. Yeah. So I think he does it really well. He's he's a good football player. Yeah. Well, yeah. Smooth a pass catcher. Wait, this guy's yeah, checking. Good, good average. I think it's ETN average, average pass catcher will make his money after the catch. And that is fine. He's not a receiver. He's a pass catcher. You don't have to be Najee Harrison, Kenneth Gainwell to have success as a yeah. receiver. Look at Chris Carson this year when healthy getting and Russell was cooking, throwing, well, yeah. throwing through the ball. There was plenty of games where his receiving was what, what did it for you. And it wasn't yeah. anything sexy, but he gets the ball. He's losing right. he's dudes over. I mean, if you're on the field for 85% of the snaps, yeah. you're probably going to get three targets, four targets. Right. right. And, and that's really, to me, any bell cow back. That's all like, that's all you need to be fine on the season for catching the ball. Look at James you know? Robinson, J right. James Robinson out of college. Was he a spectacular receiver out of Illinois state? No, pretty average. Um, yeah. But you know, he was, a great receiver this year. He right. was great out of the backfield. He made one really nice play at the end of the season. I forgot who they're playing, but it was like a back shoulder ball. That was it was pretty sweet. But I mean, yeah. he, you know, players grow, they develop. Sure. So I mean, and and that's something that we're gonna see with all these guys like ETN and Williams and the rest of this class. Like, like these guys all have question marks or more question marks than obviously you got like Najee Harris in my opinion. But those questions can be answered and yeah. over time. We'll probably see some of them get answered. And there's right. there's some other checks that I like. And I think I, I got a little bit of a pull of where what he looks like on the field and where he gets his stuff from. Like this guy is a valedictor or valedictorian of his high school class. Right. Uh, so smart guy. Love he that. He's never, ever late. He's always early. Um, so just he's got the character. Well-spoken dude. Um and then the story of this guy is that he was a linebacker all through yes. high school. And yes. then he switched yeah. to running back because he wasn't getting any looks because he wasn't as big as he was right now. And he was a smaller linebacker. His coach was quoted as saying that if he played at Hoover High School, which is a big high school in Alabama, yeah. uh, he would be able to go anywhere he wanted, essentially. Uh, but he wasn't getting those looks. So he switched to running back. He was thinking about quitting football his senior year. He only played running back for a very short amount of time. Um and then he was getting some some traction, but he really wanted to go to UNC. Um, so he ends up playing. Larry Fedora comes to a game. He ends up crushing it. 
uh, at the running back position and ends up getting his dream of going to UNC. Just grinder is not going to give up on his dreams. Parents super encouraging to, Hey, no, this is, this is what you want to do. Do it. Let's go get it. Um, but I think the big story here is that is, is that he did play linebacker. And to me, when he put that's what gives him his edge on the right. other side of the field, because he plays sort of like a linebacker at yeah. the running back position. He has instead of the target going from, hey, let's find the guy with the ball, read, react and explode. Now it's like the targets, the end zone, read, react and explode into the end zone. And I think that that linebacker mentality, that heat seeking kind of mentality that he carried as yeah. a linebacker, I think that that really translates over to that. When I read that and then I went back and watched some more stuff, I was like, that's it. Like that's he has that linebacker mentality and and the and the way he's playing the game. And then on top of that, there's other levels cooked in of like he he's at least has intuition of what those guys are thinking and how they would play it. So there's, there's so many things going on that I think that that, that linebacker position really sculpted his game into what you're seeing on the field. Yeah. I guess I think you're spot on. I mean, I think it's, you know, the mentality and the motor that he has is, you know, it, you, you can see it. And that's right. It's, I mean, an NFL, an NFL offensive corner is going to, you know, light up, if they're, you know, if you're on the clock in the early second round and he's still on the board, like yeah. he's going to be a guy that all 32 teams are going to want on their team. I think the, I don't know, I can, Atlanta's a great landing spot, but honestly, Philadelphia would be a really nice spot for him because I think that thunder lightning tandem of, I think Miles Sanders needs a running mate for one. Um, I think with his durability issues and, you know, some of the inconsistencies we've seen, I think he needs someone that he can feed off of Boston. Scott's not that guy. Yeah. Um, and he would just smash there because he Philly would, doesn't have an identity. I mean, uh, they don't. And he would break so many hearts if he went there. We so thought, many hearts. But they, everyone thinks that, that Miles Sanders is just saved now. Doug Peterson's out of there. He's going to be a bell cow. Or somebody else is going to come in there and he's going to go right back to sort of running back I think back the purgatory. writing was on the wall when they were – Roseman and Peterson wanted to take J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. That's when it, it That's just, when I'm – that's when you're like, okay – they want a like a legitimate second Tandem. back there, yeah. Right. And that, I guess, not knock on Sanders. It just no. that's how they want where play we football. are. That's where we are. And they want to play, that's the how play football. Like right. you don't. It's so hard to find a bell cow back that you know. Look at Zeke Elliott. Like man, like five, four, five years removed. He he doesn't look like the same player he did three years ago, does he? No. But that's what you get when you. Yeah when you give a guy the ball that much for that amount of time is you want fresh legs, you want, you want playmakers. And um, in the early to mid second round, Williams is going to be one of the top players on the board for sure. Yeah. I, I, I just going back to that linebacker thing. I think he plays with that mentality. He's got yep. enough wiggle. He's got yep. the strength. He's got the tenacity to break tackles consistently. And I like exploding into that contact and just people don't want it with him a lot of times. Right. And then he, he has the explosion and enough wiggle to, to keep it moving. And then one more last thing on the character, yeah, like sure. love it that in that Florida state game, which I lost money on, <laughs> um, they were getting their absolute ass kicked. He scores a touchdown and instead of like, there is nothing worse than a team and somebody getting their ass kicked and having no awareness of the situation. Like, Hey, we're fucking getting drug out here. He handed the ball right back to the ref and walks over to the sideline. A couple of his homies come over and jump kind of on him, but he's just like, ah, here's the ball. We got work to do. Like this is, yeah. this is, uh, and I fuck, I love that kind of stuff. Love like, the workman's attitude. Man. Right. It's huge. He was infectious too. It's yeah. Infectious. That's how the, I mean, honestly, we won't be talking this before the show too, but I'll bring it up again is, the Bears with Dave Montgomery down the stretch. He was their engine, not because he's some all pro caliber talent on the football field. No, because he, he he cares, right? Like he gives a shit. Like that's, right. that's a big part of it, right? Yeah, and it, go back to his character and it's off the fucking chart. Same thing. Eagle Scout, like that is right. who yeah. he is. And that is very similar to the character of Williams. And that means a lot to, you know, NFL offensive coordinators, GMs, head coaches, whatever, you know, whatever you name it. Um, it's a big deal. It doesn't mean a lot to some stubborn 
uh, fantasy people, but that, it means right. the world to me. So that that's a great point. That's just, you took the words right out of my mouth. That a lot of dynasty Twitter people don't care about that stuff, but he is getting a ton of hype right now. Like if we were on the Price Is Right and we're looking to the audience for a suggestion, they're all screaming Javante. Like the whole right. crowd is screaming Javante, and I just and 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 in the same manner, like everybody's just starting to hate on ETN. And 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 now well, you're kind a of, bunch of people moving Javante over ETN. That's kind of where my statement of like if, if like if and why if ETN <laughs> ETN's tough. greatness for so long, I think is it's starting to hurt him because he's just been like you're just like you're over it. You're like oh Javante is the new flavor of the week. It's, like, and it, it's not, it and I'm not hating on Javante. I think I don't know. I think I think that's a very Jay, that's a really valid question, and it's interesting because for me, like charting them, like pretty close. Like I have Williams a little higher because the touchdown potential is a lot greater. I think the volume potential is a lot greater, but it's a, it's a volume based position. Um, But I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, you could, it doesn't matter who's where they're both good football players. Like, so it's, you know, like you're splitting hairs at that point, but both are both are deserving of second round draft capital. And I think that's what really matters. It's not where we have them. How does the NFL value these guys? Yeah. And like I think that's I, the most important. It is. It is very important. But but there is also sometimes that that's taken too far. I think like sometimes it, it sure. matters. It matters until it doesn't. Sure. It, I it, think, ma- it matters yeah. for oppor- for chances to continue to that. Hey, you fucked up or you weren't that good. You'll continue to get more grace and longevity of turning it around and being good. Whereas, you mean capital wise. Yeah. Capital wise. No, whereas, yeah, I, if I, you don't, I agree. If you I don't have that, then, then your leash you have is a lot short. Longer. Right. Exactly. Your leash so is I think that's longer. the biggest part of that. And I, I do think obviously I'm not anywhere near as smart as people in the NFL, but people in the NFL fuck it up too. Right. <laughs> Very know. true. There was a kicker taken in the second round, not too long ago. Right. So 